Okay, this is part two of 4.3 spanning sets. We're going to start off with an example. So do these two polynomials span P2? So what we need to do is to find out if we can write any polynomial in P2 as a linear combination of these two. So what is any polynomial? So this is representing all polynomials in P2, where A, B, and C are real. So can this polynomial be written as, can't you see, so I'm going to use K1. Can we do that? Can we find K1 and K2 that represents all polynomials? This is easier if we set it up and we use ABC here. And so if this top part is my x squared, my x is my b, my constants is c, we just got to keep that the same. 0, minus 3, 1. So we can set this up. So we're just flip-flopping these sides. Well, we can't use Kramer's because a is not a square matrix. So we have to augment. So remember, we are augmenting with b. I always do that. We're solving for x. My unknowns are my k1, k2s. I like one to be up here, so I'm going to swap. That's row three. That's row one. I swapped them. And now I'm going to zero this out. The other two rows stay the same. And it looks like could go one more, but you don't have to. I think I like these equations as I see them right now, but you could zero this out and you'll get the same thing. So let's write out these equations. We've got three equations. This is, remember, this is k1, this is k2. So 1k1 plus 0k2 equals c, or basically k1 equals c because that's gone. I solve for one of them. This one second one's k2 equals b plus 3c. And our last one right here is k2 equals a. Oh, we found two of them. Oh, we found both of them. But we also have k2 equals b plus 3c. So these are the same thing. So how about we set a equals b plus 3c. So we were hoping to find k1 and k2 yeah, we were hoping to solve for k1 and k2 in terms of a, b, and c. So let's think about this. If I pick any vector a, b, c, it basically spans. We get a solution to this system if this relationship holds. This must be true to satisfy our system. So basically, since we have that a, b, and c depend on each other, it does not span p2 since they depend on each other. So what I want us to do, part two of this question, is find a polynomial that does not span in P2 that does not span. So what we need is a polynomial that does not satisfy that equation. So let's, there's many, many different answers here. So find a polynomial does, I'm going to choose an easy one. You can use matrices, but I'm going to go back to, this is my vector, ax squared plus bx plus c. The one I'm choosing is, and again, we're going to get a contradiction because it's not going to span, but let's show it. Can this vector be written as a linear combination? of my two polynomials. I think those were the, these two. Can it be written as a linear combination? Remember this right here? I'll just cut that actually, cut and paste it. So I'm gonna actually just work it out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna equate our coefficients over here. I need to combine these two, those are our x terms. So this comes down, which means the number in front of here should equal to k2. 1 equals k2. 
this is a one also. That should equal to what's in front of the x. And last but not least, but k1 should equal to one. And let's plug this in, k2 is one. k1 we found to be one. And there's our contradiction, which means we can't solve for k1, k2. So we're done. I think you need to go through all this so we're not guessing and checking. So let's look at two different polynomials. We're going to choose V1 and P2. I'm going to write them out. And we want to show these two. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at these now as vectors in R3. So how are we going to create that normal? The normal will be perpendicular. We'll cross v1 and v2. Now, what we're actually doing is we're going to assume, this is proof by contradiction, v1 and v2 do span p2. Okay, so if they span p2, then any vector, and I'm going to actually choose v3 specifically, can be written as a linear combination of v1 and 2 since that's the definition of span, okay? So spanning means any vector v3 can be written as a linear combination of those two. Again, I'm assuming they do span. So let's write that out. v3 is k1 v1 plus k2 v2. We can assume that v1, v2, and v3 are non-zero because v1 and v2 are non-zero. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take v3 and I'm going to dot product it with itself. And that's the, if we dot product, it's a3 squared, my coefficient squared, b3 squared. Okay. Also looking at this and dot product, dot producting it with itself, with v3 is k1 v1 dot v3, that's that one. And then my second one is k2 v2 dot v3. And that k can come out, k1 and k2. This is zero. Why is it zero? Because remember, we created a normal to these. And from calc three, normals to them means the dot product is zero to each of them v3 dot v1 is 0, v3 dot v2 is 0. So that's 0, this is 0, equals 0. So therefore, this must be 0. Which the only way this could be 0, because they're all positive. Which means, which is a contradiction, because they're all supposed to be all non-zero. So therefore, since we have a contradiction, it's a contradiction to the fact that we assumed they do span, which means they don't span. Therefore, v1 and v2 do not span. One more theorem. OK, so if we start off with a set that does span v, and then we take that same set, we take that same set, but then we add another vector from V to that set. Well, then this new set also spans V. Basically, i.e., if you can add, you could add any amount of vectors to a set that spans, and it still spans. Okay, I'm going to prove it, but it's a kind of a obvious proof. I could just explain it actually, but I'll prove it. We're going to let v, little v, be in big V, our parent space. So v is any vector since my set v1, v2, vn spans v. Okay, so you see that? 
we took any vector and we wrote it as a linear combination of our set that spans, that's given, basically. Okay, now we're gonna, do you think this is true? So we're gonna take that same thing that was given, B is that, and we're gonna add the constant zero times W. This is still true. So we just saw that any vector can be written as a linear combination of this new set. So therefore spans V also. Okay, so I think we saw this one. You can add vectors to a set that spans and it still spans, but can we take away vectors and will it still span? That's the question that we'll answer in our next section. Okay, have a good day.